So we're here chilling in the cut. We are in the cut of Norristown High. Yeah, where <laughs> where are we, Brianna? We are on the third floor, in this hallway near the first. No, yeah, near, near the first stairwell. Yeah, near the first yeah, stairwell. Yeah, because they're near, near there. Near room like the like between three hundred and three ten. Where the balconies are. Yeah, where the balconies are. So this is the cut for you freshmen that don't know. Mm-hmm. So there are plenty of other cuts. I know we've been in a lot of cuts we this year. We have been in a lot of cuts, and we bring them up every time. We do. We always do one in the cut. In the cut. In the cut. In the cut. It's <laughs> just one word, in the cut. In the cut. But anyways, so how can freshmen figure out where the cut is? Well, if the freshmen join student council, which I think that they're doing these applications now. What? So they could find out where the cuts are because they're in student council. Student council does, like, everything. Yeah, they do. So if you're in student council, you're pretty much going to know where the cuts are. You're going to know where all the cuts are. So instead of just hearing from us about student council, why don't you go hear it from one of the student council co-presidents. Oh, yeah. And they'll tell you a little bit about student council and also what you need to do to get into student council so that you, just like us, can know where the cuts are. So go check it out. Hi, I'm John Maxey talking with Andrew Brauchus, the president of Student Council, about applications for the freshman cabinet. How's it going, Drew? I'm good. How are you, John? Doing pretty good. All right, so what's going on with Student Council right now? Uh, student Council right now, um, we're just about to give out freshman cabinet applications. So all the freshmen out there who want to join Student Council, be a part of something bigger than themselves, you can come out and pick up an application. How do the freshmen go about acquiring an application? So you can go about apply, uh, getting an application two ways. We're going to have them down in the library, but we're also going to have them in room 351, which is Mr. Fazzini's room, if you know where that is. Um, you'll be able to pick up an application anytime. You can between classes, works, after school, before school, like before homeroom, well, first period. But, you yeah, know, before that time, you can uh, come in and get an application and then um, go about your way filling it out. Just make sure you have it back before the uh, 30th of January. Is that the deadline? That is the deadline. All right, and they can get them right now? Yeah, they can. They can get them all right. right now. They're, all, they're out and ready to go. What do the applications consist of? Uh, so the applications consist of um, a letter of recommendation okay. from a teacher. Uh, you need a report card or just a grade progress report that you have right now. And then um, you also need to fill out a questionnaire on the back, which um, is full of some questions from uh, when are you available before and after school, because we do need to know that because we do run a lot of after school and before school events. We have a meeting, our meetings every Wednesday. Um, we have to get in here by 7 uh, to have our morning meetings. Um, it's been a little more difficult this year uh, without homerooms, but you know we still are doing a great job. We're coming in the me morning meetings, and uh, we just want to make sure people are available for those, as well as available after school, because Mr. Narstown's coming up, and we just need people to be ready and prepared to work after school. For the letter of recommendation, does it have to be from a teacher, or what are the uh, rules it's a, for it's, that? It's listed as a teacher recommendation, but um, a coach would work too. So, But we prefer a teacher because uh, it's someone in the classroom. A student council member is supposed to be a model student in and out of the classroom, but you know we need to make sure that they're doing well in school and the academic part. So a teacher who um, a teacher who is also someone who's a part of your extracurriculars would be even better. So, But um, I think a teacher is uh, what we're looking for. Okay. So once you guys get all these uh, applications on the 30th, what's the process then? Um, who decides? Well, how do you decide who gets in? We review the applications um, and we just see who's most qualified. We look at their grades and see if they keep their grades up because we can't have them missing things because they uh, are missing assignments and classes and whatnot. We um, look at the recommendation, make sure that people believe that they're a good student, and then we really look at the questions that they have to offer because it really gives us a, a look into their availability for things, their creativeness, their ideas, and that's really important to us. We have questions that are a little goofy, but you know they do serve a purpose. They serve a purpose to see if people can think a little bit different because you know when you're planning events and you're planning things, you have to think a little bit different, and that's what we're looking for. Can you tell us who's involved in the vetting process of the new applicants? The vetting process. So, you know, what we do when we get new applicants is we like to have upperclassmen ki or kids who have been in student council for a little longer um, to, you know, bring the applicants in and, you know, I mean, well, the applicants or the accepted applicants actually bring, bring the kids in and then they'll work with them, try and get them involved, um, have them, you know, do tasks in Mr. Narstown, have them, like, work on things for that, work on little projects, hang up posters. You kind of slowly work your way up in student council, but, um, your first year, you're going to be working pretty hard, but I mean, uh, we've all been through it, but it's a great process. You're going to get the, uh, the time to actually be a part of some really big events, work really hard on those events, and be an integral part of those events, and it's something that you've probably never done before. 
So uh, the new members, are they going to be, once they are accepted, um, are they fully involved? Are they a full member? Uh, well, they're considered um, the freshman cabinet because okay. our whole cabinet is um, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders because they're in there for the whole year. They're just called the freshman cabinet because they're in there for half the year, but they're doing the same work that the people in student council are doing. They're student council members. Um, and that's really the thing is like, it's not like, oh, you can't do that because you're a freshman cabinet member. No, you're a student council member now. Um, now for the first few weeks, you might be having um, an upperclassman help you with a lot of the things that you're doing. Like they might be showing you how the ropes and whatnot. But I mean, by the end of the year, you're a full fledged student council member. So I think that's really important to remember. It's not like you're like the water boy. You're, you know, you're playing the game. Okay. So once they're in for a freshman cabinet, um, do they have to apply again at the end of the towards the end of the year again, along with the rest of the freshman cap? I mean the student council cabinet. Yeah, that's how it works. So officers are voted on at the end of the year, and then they don't have to apply. They make the application for next year. But every student who's in student council who wants to be in student council next year has to reapply or apply um, at the end of the year, and that's just to make sure that you know. Um, you're not in student council for all four years unless you keep applying. Like there's sometimes student council isn't the best. It doesn't make sense in everyone's schedule. They want to try something different. They want to go do DECA or something. And we want to have, give the kids the ability to do that. So what we do is like we open up at the end of the year for new applicants or for kids to just not reapply. Um, and sometimes there's the rare cases where kids aren't maybe fit for student council. But, you know, we decided that at the end of the year we want to make sure that kids, um, we have the best group each year. I know you talked about a few of the events that the freshman cabinet and the rest of the student council is involved in, but can you just uh, describe the time commitment that student council takes, you know, just so freshman cabinet understand what they're getting involved mm -hmm. with? So um, student council, um, it fluctuates in the amount of time commitment, but it's a time commitment. Um, so homecoming week, it's a big time commitment. Um, you're working hard on stuff, you're busting around, you're trying to get stuff working. Um, you're setting up for pep rally, you're setting up for the dance. Um, and then there's things like fundraisers, which are like things you have to go to be at for four hours. So, I mean, but then you, you got to make sure that every Wednesday you are there at our meetings at 7. Um, that's just because that's our meetings to the whole cabinet where we address them, we talk about the things that we're doing, we get things planned. Um, but then there's some after school stuff. Mr. Narstown's a big commitment. Um, it's a big show, but it's probably one of those things that like when you see it done, you feel like you accomplished something. And yeah. um, I think that like when I was a freshman and I got to work on that and it was like the first taste of like being a part of something that like I plan I helped do, I helped execute, and then like looking at it, you were like amazed that you did that, like that you were a part of that. So you know, the time commitment pays off. And when I'm talking about a big time commitment, I'm talking about staying until like 3.30. Like, but um, some nights, yeah, we're here a little longer. But, you know, I think it's not something that is too much to ask, something that's going to like take away from other activities. Like I have been able to participate in student council as well as DECA all four years. And I think that there's ways to get around. Like you don't have to just be a student council member. And I think that's a really good part about this school is that you can kind of be involved in a bunch of different things and kind of chase all your interests. Why is uh, Student Council such a great organization to get involved with, you know, early in your high school career? Um, it really gets, you know, a foot in the door with leadership in the school. Student Council is supposed to serve as model students for the rest of the school, um, and they're supposed to kind of lead by example, and they're supposed to, like, plan things for school. Um, there's something to say about when you're young and you're planning homecoming, something that affects everyone in the school, something that, like, seniors look forward to, juniors look forward to, and you're a sophomore helping. And, you know, you feel bigger. You feel like you've done something. and. Um, I think just getting involved early makes you a better member, a bigger member of the school community, and that's something we all should aspire to be doing. So do you think it gives them a sense of like unity and involvement? Oh yeah, no, for sure. That's what it's really about, is like you want to be involved, and you feel that sense of unity. You're right. You feel that like you're a part of like the school, the school community, and it's really something uh, you know, really cool. And not only the school, but did they also get the uh, you know, feeling of being involved in the community also? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're right, because um, we go out in the community. We do a lot of 5Ks, runs, and stuff. That was our way of getting out in the community. We started that last year. Uh, we've continued it this year. We do 5Ks. Um, we run. We're doing Broad Street. A few kids are doing this year. Um, and I think that that's something important that we do. We get out in the community and you know, be seen, um, do things to help other people. Because student council shouldn't be just to serve themselves. It should be to serve other people, too. And that's part of being a model student and a model citizen. 
All right, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Drew? I just want to make sure the kids know that they can pick up the applications um, in room 351, which is in Mr. Fazzini's room, as well as um, in the library. Um, and they need to get them back by uh, January 30th um, with a recommendation, a grade report, and then make sure they fill out all those questions. Um, Thank you, Andrew. I just talked with Andrew Baltrus about freshman cabinet applications. They are due January 30th, so hand them in freshman. Now back to you, Will's eye.